And via telephone, John Elliott, who is uh, the number one scout in this region of the state. John, good morning to you, sir. Mm-hmm. Good morning to you all. Good to be on with you. Yeah, uh, where, you're not at the Big Jamboree, uh, John, but you are uh, yeah. currently on location, as they say. Where are you? I, I am currently at beautiful Camp Rock Enon Scout Reservation here in Gore, Virginia. Mm-hmm. This is our local council camp. Uh, this week, we're, we're hosting just a few of my uh, closest friends. It's uh, about 250 plus or minus campers. Uh, about 200 of them are scouts that are out here for a week of fun learning and just getting some great fellowship going on. Now, is there a particular reason why this is going on the same time as the bigger jamboree that's going on? But, well, there's a few reasons. One, our summer camp season, we traditionally run from mid-June until the end of July, there are a lot of scouts who, who can't make it to the Jamboree, um, either for expense or just the distance. Uh, it's a 10-day trip versus ours are week-long camps. Um, so, so there are various reasons people don't end up getting the chance to go to the Jamboree. Uh, this way they still get their opportunity to have their annual summer camp. Jamboree only happens once every four years. Um, or at least that's its schedule. This year's actually a makeup because of COVID shut down the one we were supposed to have in 21. Um, so it's an every four year thing. And we have our summer camp schedule every year um, where, where scouts come out and just enjoy the 900 acres we've got right here in council locally. Have you been to Jamboree before, John? I, as a youth, I visited uh, back in 19. 19- I'm not even going to say 19 what. It was a long time ago. <laughs> and the, the address, I went down just for the day, and we stayed for the evening uh, show. And President Reagan uh, made an address to the Jamboree by a jumbotron. So uh, that gives you an idea how long ago it was. Now, I have, as you know, I have an Eagle Scout <laughs> in the studio with me here. You do. I, the- has the Admiral made it to a Jamboree? I have not. I was hoping to go. I unfortunately came down with rheumatic fever uh, that year, oh. and I, so I was in bed all summer while all my colleagues went. But that was in Philmont. Bill will do anything to get out of work. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Uh, that, that was in Philmont. Do they still have a jamboree in Philmont as well? You know? right, no. Uh, we've moved all the jamborees. Uh, this is uh, since my 2013 are being held at the Summit Bechdel Reserve down in uh, – Mount Hope, West Virginia. Um, so we built a facility down there. It's got about 10,800 acres. Um, so it, it's just a tiny little place that we've got um, designed specifically to host the Jamboree every four years, as well as just give uh, some great high adventure areas to be able to uh, spend time in. Yeah, I can see for summer like this summer where everything is uh, is so hot. But what was the logic for moving from Philmont to New, uh, to uh, which I think was in New Mexico uh, to, uh, to West Virginia? Um, they had the original jamboree back in. It was scheduled for for 1935, which would have been the 25th anniversary of scouting, but got pushed back to 37 just logistically. Um, was in Washington D.C. Over the years, it had been in several places, including in Utah, like you said, at Philmont, um, Fort A.P. Hill in Virginia hosted several. But the, the point of moving it out someplace different was that they were able to create a center that is a, a full high adventure area. They've got the wider water rafting so close there at the New River Gorge, um, the, the beautiful mountains in West Virginia. They've got a, a super long, one of the, the top five zip lines in the world. Um, and, and they wanted it to be someplace different than Philmont so that Philmont can continue to offer the treks that they do, which is the, the wonderful hiking there in the, the New Mexico hills. So uh, it, it allows Philmont to be more what Philmont is, was really designed to be a, a trek location. And this way we'd have a separate place that we could set as a permanent home, so to speak, for the Jamboree. Maria. So we were talking, um, uh, John, before we came on the air with you um, about the um, 
you know, the, the movement of, um, of the Boy Scouts to mm -hmm. accept um, young women. And yep. um, so talk a little bit about that. How does that sort of change the camp experience, whether it be the big old jamboree or, um, or the one that you're doing in Gore? Okay. Uh, we, we are are very excited to have the young ladies with us. Um, we are finding that they have taken this program um, they, and just are, are doing phenomenally. Um, I know Rob will remember a couple of years back, and Bill, too, the uh, young lady that was there was an Eagle Scout uh, with her Eagle Project that spoke so eloquently at your dinner a couple of years ago there, Bill. But what we found was we just need to make sure we set the single use spaces. Um, we, we've got shower houses that are just, you walk in, you close and lock the door and you're, you're set. Um, we find the addition of the, the boys and the girls together just adds a, a different element that's in society already. And they are working wonderfully together. Um, the, the, the girls seem to be challenging the boys. I know when, we get to Eagle Boards a review. We find a lot of times the the young women are coming in with uh, 30 to 35 merit badges or a few more, and the average boy 21 is required to get Eagle, and they're they're usually in the 20 to one to 25 range. So the girls are really they're high achievers. And Maria, don't be smiling but at I'm me sorry. and Bill like I'm that. Sorry, I just you know. <laughs> I wish I could be there to see your face, Maria. Uh, <laughs> no, you don't, John. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was a wonderful thing for us. We were we were getting so many people who just wanted uh, sisters to be able to get the same uh, wonderful program that Boy Scouts of America offers that their brothers were getting. John, uh, has families it, were just excited to be able to offer it to them. Has this made the Girl Scouts adjust their program to try to retain more girls? Uh, that's a wonderful question for the Girl Scouts. Um, I concentrate on what our program is, um, and, and that we make sure we offer the, the best possible program to everybody who wants to participate with us, um, whether they're boys or girls, um, and, and let them work with their program. Uh, my goal is to just make sure that we're offering a program that, that the youth of the, the communities can benefit from. Um, and, and that we not water down anything we do. The requirements for Eagle did not get any easier when we made the decision to add girls to the program. Uh, the requirements for the merit badges are, are always being looked at and updated, but making them easier was not included in the calculus. Um, we, we worry about our program and let others worry about their own. Yeah, John. Uh, how many folks at the National Jamboree this week? And uh, the second question is, how long do the jamborees last? All right. Well, the jamboree is, goes from today is the first day. Um, our contingent actually left. They they all met together in Winchester and got on a bus, and they left about one o'clock this morning uh, to get down there. It's going to be hanging out with fifteen thousand of their closest friends. Um. So, so yeah, we put uh, 15,000 people in that uh, uh, 10,800 acres to, to have a whole lot of fun. So and they're there until the 28th. So it's an 11-day adventure, basically, by the time you get to travel and everything involved. And we have boys, uh, boys and girls from all over the country coming. Is that correct? Yeah. It, it's, all 50 states are represented, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, D.C., and we actually have two councils that are outside the U.S. that are still parts of Boy Scouts of America. They serve primarily military bases and diplomatic areas. Um, one is called the Far East Council and the other the Transatlantic Council. Um, so we've got all 50 states, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, D.C., and the two international councils so John, that are represented down there. With that many kids there, and I know you said you had a couple hundred at, in Gore, are, are they basically all sleeping in tents, or are there actually some indoor facilities? Uh, some of the staff is indoor facilities down there at uh, the Jamboree, but uh, the participants, yeah, they're all in tents. Those are air-conditioned um, tents, though, right? <laughs> I, of course, uh, as long as the wind is blowing. <laughs> um, now, uh, our contingent uh, here, from, here locally in the Shenandoah Area Council 
uh, sent down 40 people. Um, the vast majority of them are in single-person tents that are quite short, and I, I would not be comfortable. The adults do get a little bit better comfort, um, but it's still, it is a tent. The, the heat is, is definitely there, and um, we can usually count on at least a couple good rainstorms to cause a lot of mud every year we have a jamboree. So Sounds like uh, youth they would stop. They're in for. Yeah. <laughs> Mount Hope is obviously not experiencing the heat that we see in Arizona and uh, New Mexico and the like. Or Berkeley but, County. Or Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, it's not, not as bad. But uh, are there precautions been taken this year because of what we've seen in extreme heat in other parts of the, state, uh, the country? Yes. They, they definitely have. They have indoor spaces that you can get into. They have uh, the the wet blowing fans to to give you areas that we've got great um, medical facilities, primarily manned by EMTs and uh, people with uh, definite uh, abilities in looking after heat stroke. Everybody's reminded that constantly to keep hydrated. Um, because that is, of course, one of the biggest fears when you get into uh, the extreme heats. Um, and, of course, we, we have physical requirements that are, you have to pass a, a relatively uh, rigorous physical comprehensive to make sure you're healthy enough to, to potentially be out there in that kind of heat for that kind of time. John, talk a little bit about what the typical day um at well at the camp that you're at would look like yeah. for um for a young scout okay typically a young scout first year kind of scout mm -hmm. tiny tenderfoot area um they're gonna we come in on uh, sunday afternoon and and get checked in and they're going to spend uh, half their day working on basic scout skills things like tying knots to be able to, to attach things and, and save and rescue and the, the type of things we use knots for. They learn knife safety. They learn how to start a fire. They learn all the basic scout skills. They're also spending time learning um, flag etiquette and different civic responsibilities. Um, and the, the final thing they learn in what we call our frontier program for our first year scouts is we've added the first aid merit badge. Um, we found that uh, most of the, re the earlier ranks require some first aid knowledge and you get almost the entire first ma aid merit badge learning all of those things. So we might as well teach it. So uh, the first merit badge they earn is usually going to be that one. They then spend the other half of the day just working on different merit badges of their choice. Could be something like swimming, or they could go out to the nature and, and learn about insect studies or fishing. We've got uh, other outdoor skills like pioneering or orienteering, um, where you're, you're tying things together or learning how to use a compass. And then we've got our shooting sports area that's always fun, where a lot of the first-year campers will learn archery or riflery. Um, for the most part, we encourage them to be a little bit older before they use, get the shotgun merit badge, but uh, uh, it, it's also offered. So then in the evening, we'll have dinner, and after dinner, there's some fun games that we do, um, running around camp and having campfires and lots of uh, back-to-the-campsite for s'mores type evening events. And then by the time they're done in a day, they are tuckered out, and they go to sleep usually pretty well. Yeah. John, uh, this obviously costs money. Uh, do the, are the individual scouts asked, uh, charged a certain amount, and the ones that cannot afford, are they provided scholarships or grants? Um, there are scholarships available. Um, it, it is the, each person coming to camp, whether it's ours or the Jamboree, um, we do have our fees. We, we try to keep them as reasonable as possible. Um, this year for the National Jamboree was about 1500 though. Um, we offer camperships that are available that we offered here locally that would pay up to half of a, either the summer camp or the Jamboree, depending on which campership you were looking for. On the national level, there were also camperships available. Um, we also encourage several different ways to fundraise. Um, we definitely believe that a scout should be thrifty, and part of thrifty is figuring out how to pay your way. And um, <laughs> sometimes it's uh, through 
family has the resources and are able to, but other times it's uh, the Boy Scouts of America has a great program selling popcorn. Um, there are other programs that we're involved with. The, mulch, the too. Units raise money. Yeah, they sell mulch door to door in my neighborhood. A lot of scout troops, that's, that is a wonderful fundraiser. Um, and the money they raise for their, through their troop, they are able to use for things like summer camp, whether it's here locally at Camp Rock, even, or getting a chance to head down to the National Jamboree. Well, John- here, here in the Potomac District, we've got uh, 22 out of the 40 folks we got down at Jamboree are all out of our district here in the East nice. Panhandle. So they did a lot of fundraising. Do the uh, you said it's about fifteen hundred dollars? Does that mean the girls show up with seventeen hundred and the boys show up with fifteen oh one? Is that how that works? They all come with the same amount. Yeah. Uh, what they what they take then to spend it may be different, but uh, yeah. sure. no, we we charge them all the same, and uh, it, it'd be nice if we could figure out a way to uh, prorate based on what they were doing. But no, we want to keep it the same. Uh, hey. But the that was actually quite funny, Rob. No, thank you. Every <laughs> once in a while. If you throw out enough volume, one of them's going to hit the wall and stick there. <laughs> hey, have you seen the movie Moonrise Kingdom, John? I don't know if I've ever asked you that before or not. I have not. Okay. this It was made in 2012. I, I happened to watch it sometime in the last year. It's a wonderful, quirky little movie, and it's basically it's about a lot of things, but scouting is a big part of it. Uh, Bill Murray's in it, Ed Norton, Bruce Willis. And What's it called again, Rob? Moonrise Kingdom. Moonrise Kingdom. It was made in 2012, and it is just a marvelous little quirky movie. And there is a Boy Scout who's probably 12 years old at the center of it. I won't give away any more story, any more of the story of it than that, other than to tell you it's really worth the watch. Okay. And, and if, if you're into scouting or you just like little kind of neat little quirky independent movies because <laughs> it's of that style – it's definitely it's a Wes Anderson movie, and it's it's just really a, worth a watch. Dylan obviously has seen it, our producer, and he's giving me a, the thumbs up on it as well. It's kind of like the Napoleon well, well, Dynamite of scouting. Okay, <laughs> there we go. That, that's a, a interesting thought process, but uh, it is now on my must see list. So All right, there, uh, next time we chat, hopefully I will have seen it by then. Yeah, John, you uh, we've uh, yeah. mentioned two or three times that uh, uh, the girls are becoming more and more involved in the Boy Scouts. Is there any yeah. thought about changing the name from Boy Scouts to, to just Scouts? Well, we in fact, uh, for our actual programs, um, we have pretty much taken that out. We, we call it uh, our Cub Scouts have always been Cub Scouts and didn't have the boy name in it. The, the the major thrust where we got all our troops was always the Boy Scout troops when you were growing up, Bill, and when I was and when my boys were. We now call them Scouts BSA um, to be inclusive. Um, and then there's the Venture Crews and the Explorer Posts. that we, We've taken the boy out of all of our individual groupings. However, we have been the Boy Scouts of America – since 1910 as an organization um and that name has a connotation to it that, that's a very positive as being a preeminent um youth development and character and leadership uh, development organization so at this point we don't have any chance plans to change the the corporate name we just we, we've changed all of the different groups where people belong into um, a more inclusive name. Yeah, please, please don't change it because it is the Boy Scouts and people are joining it for a reason. And if you're a girl right. and you want to be in the Boy Scouts, that's fine. But we don't need to change the name because of it. Well, and, and like I said, there are no plans whatsoever to do that. We, we understand that the Boy Scouts of America name has value it does and, and so we, yes. we're not looking to do that and for all of us who have been a boy scout in the past we don't want to have to hit the sidewalks protesting that we're losing our name because <laughs> bill well, bill can get worked up when you get him i can get worked up yeah no get, you don't want to work no. bill up. final minute with john elliott what do you have for us bill no and uh, thanks john thanks for what you and the other uh uh leaders are are doing with the boy scouts as you know i i feel the boy scouts played a very vital role in my formative years and i and i applaud what you and the others are doing well, same well, thank you so much for that we we appreciate what you do um and 
I, I'm humbled to think that, that an organization I get to be a part of is is something that you credit for your success. Yeah. John, thanks so much for your time this morning. I appreciate it as always. Oh, and, and, and by the way, uh, real quick, uh, if you could tell uh, anybody listening how they can find out more and join Boy Scouts. i got like 20 seconds for you. All right. We'd love to do that. Uh, all you got to do is go to bascout.org, type in your zip code. It's the easiest way to find a unit close to you. Visit two or three to make sure you find one that's got the right night, the right personalities. We'd love to have you come visit and then uh, join us and, and be part of an awesome organization that's been a big part of my life for many years. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Th Bill. Thanks, Thanks John. Andrea. See you soon.